His question is, when Revelation 2.13 refers to Satan's throne being in Pergamum, my NASB 77 keyword study Bible had a reference to this possibly alluding to a massive altar to Zeus. Now, when corrupt Elohim, fallen angelic beings are ruling over or deceiving nations, I assume that they aren't actually and honestly representing themselves. Lying is, after all, the native language of Satan. So, if the footnote is true, would we assume that when ancient Greeks worshipped Zeus, they were actually worshipping the original rebel himself, as opposed to some other spiritual being hiding behind the identity facade persona of Zeus? We would say that Satan is not omnipresent in the same way that God is. So would this area actually be his territorial headquarters at one point? No, I, I would answer the question no, um, for a number of reasons. You know, s Scripture itself never specifically identifies Satan, you know, with one point of geography. You know, he'd be the, the god of this world. You know, just think of a phrase like that. The other issue is it's really not possible to create one-to-one -one correspondences like the the question sort of angles for or suggests or or asks, you know. In the case of Zeus, I think there is something to the to the reference, uh, you know, that that was described there, Pergamum, and then this altar to Zeus. Uh, so then then you'd have to ask the question, you know, well, why why you know is that conceived of or thought of in, for lack of a better way of putting it, satanic language? Uh, and I think there's there's a conceptual reason for it, but it's it's not that we have the ability to identify what you know entity what god that the greeks or the romans or the egyptians or whoever it was that they were talking about is is this you know biblical figure over here there's no way you know for us to to make those kind of assessments or judgments you know scripture doesn't really give us th that kind of information in the in the case of zeus zeus derives from old greek dios or deus and the old Indo-European dios, which is Sanskrit diaus, all of those terms mean sky or heaven. And I think that's the, the conceptual link, you know, that you don't have sky or heaven as a meaning of Satan or Diabolos, which is devil. I mean, they're, they're, these are different terms. So that you, again, you, it forbids this one-to-one -one equation. But if Zeus was conceived of as the sky god, the, the god of heaven, okay, the god of the heavens, uh, just like Yahweh was, and, and he is also referred to as the Most High. I think that thinking about it that way is helpful here, because by this time, you know, you're in the New Testament period, you've got the association of of Satan on a number of fronts with being in control of, you know, the control of the earth, control of the world, and also sort of being portrayed as this this kind of rival who wanted to be like the Most High, you know, wanted to be Lord of the, of the Divine Council and that sort of thing, wanted to be the Lord of Heaven. And so if you're thinking about Satan in those terms, and then you run into a deity that the Greeks worship called Zeus, who is, is referred to as the Most High or the, or the God of Heaven, I mean, even his name is, you know, identified with that. That's the connection. In other words, this, the, Zeus would be viewed as a usurper or as a a uh, kind of a conceptual counterpart to the you know fallen being in the Hebrew Bible that wanted to be the highest authority he wanted to be the most high wanted to again be the the god of the council the god of heaven so you you don't have a direct relationship with the names with the terms you know satan diabolos zeus satan no, you, you 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 can't make these these neat identifications on the basis of the terminology you can see how, again, in this case, the writer of Revelation would think of Zeus on the, along the same lines as, again, the original rebel who wanted to be the Most High, because that, that's sort of a title that is attributed to Zeus, uh, the God of Heaven. Again, you know, this is what, what the name means. So there's, there's a conceptual congruence, but there's no way to, like, you know, fill out a roster, okay, like you would in you know, baseball or football, this, this one's this, you know, this one's at third base, this one's at shortstop, you know, you, you, you can't do that. You can't say this, this name is this deity over here in the Bible or this figure like Satan. It's just not that easy.
we don't have the data for that. Um, you, you do get the only time you can approximate that in terms of names is when the Hebrew Bible will actually use like the name of Baal in, in, at, a, at a particular location. Baal is often part of toponyms, you know, place names. So, okay, we know who was worshipped there. You know, the, the, there are things like that that you can do, but uh, Satan is not a geographical name. It's a functional name, and it has a, a, obviously a, a long and varied history from the Old Testament through the Second Temple period on to the New Testament. And then to sort of try to strike a specific equivalent in Greek religion to that entity. You, you just can't do it with terminology. But conceptually, you can see why they would think that way about Zeus. 